want to learn about one of the most extensively researched nutrients by a researcher who's done work in this field for over 30 years and how it can support your health, your bones, your blood sugar, your heart health, and so many other things. If you want to learn that, stick around for this episode because I'm going to tell you exactly where you can find these nutrients. We're going to walk through the studies. I'm going to link to everything down in the show notes. And you're going to leave this and really be impressed with the knowledge and the passion that Dr. Barry Tan is going to bring to this episode. So I'm looking forward to it. I want to see you inside learning about this key nutrient that you may never have even heard of. So join me inside and we'll see you soon. People have bad tooth, their tooth extraction. So when you extract the tooth, then you have a socket. They call it loosening a, a, a hole like that. So he's going to put in this calcium phosphate and then we'll load the GG in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the same GG that's going to be in your heart. Load it in and put it in the socket and suture it up. And we're going to find out if the GG will accelerate the growth of the gum cell, which is part of your jawbone. So we are putting what I say the research direction is. It's going to take some time to get the answer, but we are doing it. So I wouldn't do this if there's no rationale to do this. So that's the bisphosphonate piece. So if people are taking bisphosphonate, minimally, and I'm not asking you, you should be talking to your doctor if you should take or not take, but if you're taking it, at least to take things that can help to prevent the side effects of bisphosphonate. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. It's a little red button. You punch that and it's going to notify you every time we put out a new episode that can help you improve your bone health. And then also, if you haven't done so already, head over to bonecoach.com, sign up for the free seven day osteoporosis kickstart. That's going to walk you through everything you need to be doing right now to get on the path to improvement and stronger bones. After you do those two things, go ahead and press play on this episode and I'll see you inside. Welcome, welcome to this episode of The Bone Coach Show. Joining us today to explore vitamin E, tocotrienols, and geranyl geraniol, and how these underused nutrients may hold the key to improving your health and your bones is Dr. Barry Tan. Dr. Barry Tan, first and foremost, a scientist with a PhD in chemistry and biochemistry, was formerly an assistant professor at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst, uh, chemistry, food, science, and nutrition. For the last 35 years, Barry has immersed himself in the world of vitamin E and is considered one of the world's foremost experts credited with commercializing tocotrienol in three major natural sources, palm, rice, and annatto. His first discoveries were in palm and rice, but due to their high levels of tocopherol, they also lacked potency. Barry continued his research and was soon rewarded when he found the best-in-class tocotrienol in the annatto plant. Barry's relationship with Anato has spanned more than 20 years and multiple clinical trials across chronic diseases. He was again rewarded when he discovered geranyl geraniol, an endogenous nutrient that's important to promote healthy aging. Dr. Barry Tan, this is an exciting topic, and I am thrilled to have you with us today. I am really excited to be on, and I've lots of useful information, and I hope your audience can take away uh, information that they can use for their own life and wellness. I know they will. I know they will. This is such an important topic, and it's really fascinating, the information that you've come and the research you've done over these years. And I would love to understand, how did you come across this annatto plant, and what sparked your interest to study it further? Yes. I The year was 1994. And there was a famous ophthalmologist at Harvard, and she said that uh, uh, on the back of the eye, lining the back of the eye, uh, are two uh, uh, important nutrients called lutein and zeaxanthin, and they filter out the blue light. So that's nothing to do with tocotrienol, but that's why. So I thought, oh, I think if I go to South America, there's giant marigold petal, I can go extract them. Remember, that was the reason I went to South America in Peru. I went and sure enough, I found a giant marigold, which I described in the book. Hopefully you guys can download and read about it. So I found a plant and about 30 feet away from me, I found another plant. 
So this is my fate. That has nothing to do with what I went to South America for. Here's a picture uh, of Anato. So you can see the beautiful color. If you can see, if I were to touch the seed, it will stain it. That is another carotene. Then I surmise that there must be something very uh, potent that uh, prevent this carotene from oxidation. The audience may or may not know. Omega-3 fish oil is unstable but the world's most unstable compound is carotene. They are very unstable. And then they say, no, Dr. Tan, that's not correct because beta carotene and carrot, they stick around and lycopene in tomato, they stick around. Good question. But the beta carotene and lycopene that they implant, they're inside the cytoplasm. In, the, the plant makes it that way, but not so with the anato. You can stain your hand when you do it. So I knew that there must be some other phytonutrient. I was guessing it was to be a polyphenol, like that there are many polyphenol around. And then I took some home, I analyzed them, and shockingly and surprisingly to me, it was not a polyphenol. And then furthermore, it is a vitamin E molecule. And furthermore, uh, it is not a tocopherol. Nature makes mostly tocopherol. Instead, it is tocotrienol. And the most shocking of them all, it is a tocotrienol. It's completely free of tocopherol. I knew that, you know, I'm not a medicine man. And I didn't even go to South America to look for this plant, you know. So they were just right there. And then I found this. That was exactly 25 years ago. I never changed. So this is truly a plan from Amazonia. Before you move on to the next one, I show you, this should be a National Geographic picture. That is an anato plant. You can see the seed if they're here. That's a frog inside the anato plant. I zoom in with a real camera, not my iPhone. And you can see the frog is about the size of a dime. That means it's a very small frog. It's called an Amazonian tree frog. They were discovered in Amazonian. This tree frog never uh, live on land with water. They're right on the canopy on top. I show that picture to communicate with you. This truly is an Amazonian wonder. So we are now talking on this. I'm so excited to talk about this. So that's how my discovery, it just was like that. 25 years ago, I never changed code. So it's not a flash in the pan. It was a long, so it's kind of like a good bottle of wine. It just got better every year and 25 years, I'm good. <laughs> and you've poured your heart and soul and research into this and you, you, it's amazing. You went to South America to find a different plant and you found this other plant, Anato, and it's, it's a beautiful plant. And then from this, from this plant, you extract tocotrienols and geranol geraniol. What could you maybe explain? What are they? What are tocotrienols? <laughs> What's geranol geraniol and what's the difference between them? Okay. How about for simplicity for the audience, the tocotrienol is a vitamin E and we'll just call it T3. T for this kind of tocopherol, tocotrienol, three because the, the tail has three double bond. Tocopherol tail have no double bond. So T3 refers to tocotrienol. And geranol geranol, we we'll just acronize it to GG like that. The okay, molecule... so just to clarify for everybody, tocotrienol from here forward in the conversation, Dr. Barry is going to call it T3, tocotrienol, because it is a mouthful, and geranol, geraniol from here forward, he's going to call it GG. So, Dr. Okay. Barry? So, I like this picture. If I go back, that's a picture of the vitamin E tocotrienol. The reason tocotrienol is a powerful antioxidant, I purposely get away, get the tail off. You can see the OH group my, my pinky point. It is because of that, it is a very powerful lipid antioxidant that protect your cell wall. Then what is the tail here? The tail here, you see, is hydrogen and carbon, very lipid soluble. It sticks in your biomembrane. So this is factual. So therefore, this thing sticks out. So when the oxygen radical come and mess up the membrane, this thing will grab the oxygen and make it whole again. That is how vitamin E function. But between tocopherol and tocotrienol, T3 is head and shoulder above uh, tocopherol. So that's that piece. So now you ask your question is, 
how is GG different from topical trienol? If, so if I could even ask a clarifying question just on the tocopherol piece, yes. because people may <laughs> see this on, they may be familiar with vitamin E and they may see tocopherol on there. Why is that something that they don't want? Right. I know you kind of just circled around. Yes. It. Yeah. They don't want because about actually, Kevin, that's an excellent question. And sometimes uh, uh, kind of like cull back and put the brakes on is good. Tocopherol has been known for 50 years or more. And over the last 20, 30 years, a lot of studies were done on it. They were gaming on the fact that since tocopherol is an antioxidant, if you take 10, 20, 30 times more, then it would be able to work against chronic condition. So if the audience were to do a Google search, the 1990s to 2000, if you just simply type vitamin E, it's a bomb. Not only going south, it's bomb. So remember, do not throw away the baby with the bathwater. When you see that, that's referring to vitamin E is an, as in alpha tocopherol, and they gave people 20 to 50 times higher. So the body is just back up with all this. They don't know what to do with it. Toco trienol is different. I'll show you the tail here. You see, there's a double bond here. One, two, and three. And that's why it try in three double bond. Otherwise you'll be looking like a tocopherol. But this three double bond here is all that they perfectly snug into the biomembrane. Now I know it's not even on my books to say this. Each of us, you, I wanna give you some numbers you can hold on to. Each human person contains 38 trillion cells. That's about 5,000 times the population of the earth. You cannot have a cell without a cell wall. You must have a cell wall. And the cell, so, so to contain all the stuff inside the cell, like the nucleus, the mitochondria, the nucleus make you look like your parents and me look like my parent, you know, and then the mitochondria to make energy and other things to make, these are called organelles. And the organelles in the cell must have cell wall I, can, I call that a gated community. If the community lost its gated nurse, then the cell will age and will die. So therefore the protection of the cell wall, people don't give much, oh, it's just a cell wall, what's the big deal? Well, I just explained to you, it's, it's an aging process. If, you, if the cell wall cannot take care of itself, then all the content and the value that the cell contain will be lost. Just think of a, a, a moat around a castle, not difficult. So, so a vitamin E is perfectly suited. This one here, I wish I have all the time in the world to explain to you. There are thousands of antioxidants and I'm sure you heard of them. So the audience, I'm so confused because everything taught and it's an antioxidant and now Dr. Tan is talking about another antioxidant. Yes, I feel your pain and I want to cut it out the noise for you. When I talk about antioxidant, I'm specifically interested in antioxidant that protect the fat, F-A-T. I'm not saying that protecting the protein and the carbohydrate is no good, I'm not saying that. But why do I say to protect the fat? 80% of all the cell wall are fat, one. And just think, now we're in the summertime, you drive past a roadkill, that smell. You put a stick of butter on a hot summer day and go back two hours later. That smell. That is oxidized fat. So fat is the first thing to go off. Not protein, not carbohydrate. So I care for using a New England minute man. You want the minute man to be out there to capture the radical that go back. And so not all antioxidant can be on the cell membrane, a vitamin E molecule can. So the antioxidants here sticking out of the water on the membrane, and then this lipid soluble stick inside. And there is no known antioxidant that can protect the membrane like this. Now I'm gonna go back to Kevin's original question. How is this different from GG? This fantastic plan, I consider a gift from God. I, I never went to South America to look for this. If I purposely go off, off site here, so I'm blocking this part, the antioxidant part. So if I do this, this one, 
That is the molecule of GG. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a molecule of GG. So the plant use GG to make tocotrienol. That's it. But why the anato plant produce so much GG it didn't need and just leave it there? I don't exactly know. But when I was when I discovered the toco, I discovered toco trienol first. I just thought that that would be a gift of God, as is because it's the goal. And then when I extracted this, I always found something in the bottom of the pot that looked like corn oil. So over time, I got curious. I got to figure out what this thing is. So when I did it, oh, jaranol, jaranol, GG. What is that supposed to do? That's when I merged the two together. As I go on, I'll tell you. But while I'm at it, I'm going to walk away from my path. I'll show you the molecule in front, which is GG. And then behind is a molecule of coenzyme Q10. Most people know about that. Good for energy, good for their heart. When you take GG, your body use GG to make CoQ10. And there you have it. I'm going to get off. And you can see right in front of me, that's a molecule GG. And in the back, it's a long molecule like an albatross. If you look, the entire length of the car, of the black and white here, two and a half times the length of it is GG. The body used GG to make CoQ10. One. This is only one of the many goodies, you know. Wait until I explain why GG is good for the bone. And so for no other reason, GG make CoQ10. What's they not to like? CoQ10 is very important to us. So there you have it, the two. <laughs> hey, it's Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. I want to take one more minute to talk about if you are somebody who was newly diagnosed with osteopenia or osteoporosis, and you're at a point where you're stressed, you're worried, you're overwhelmed, you have no idea where to start or how to get started getting confident in your plan, I want to tell you about the Stronger Bone Solution Program. Over 5,000 people have come through this Stronger Bone Solution program, and it walks you through the exact process you need to fill in the missing pieces, uncover critical things in your plan that you may not be aware of, and help you make modifications, adjustments, and tweaks to get you to the place where you're building stronger bones. I want you to get confident in your plan so that you can focus on living life and enjoying the life that you deserve with the people you love most. So if that's where you wanna be, head over to bonecoach.com forward slash apply and apply for our Stronger Bone Solution program right now. I'm Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. I wanna see you inside this program. I wanna help you get on the path to improvement in Stronger Bones. Hope to see you inside very soon. Let's get back to the episode. Well, that's, I mean, that that's fascinating. So what I took from that is for tocotrienols, that helps Tocotrienols protect fat or the protect the cells too better than any other antioxidant out there. Okay. That so, is correct. So that's that's one of the biggest takeaways, I think, from this is it's it's one of the most powerful antioxidants, especially for protecting our our cell health. And then in terms of dranal geraniol, it's something that we need to produce these other important nutrients in our bodies. Right. Yes. And now now the phrase come to me. I think of Jaranol Jaranol is a nutrient your body already make. I'm just fortunate to stumble on this. My tiny company that I do research with, I have the privilege to discover this. We are the first company in the world, just happened to be an American company. We make GG. Oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, not, not that this is I'm holding the big American flag. I'm an immigrant to this country. I, 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 I love it. And then I'm given a chance to make out and make good here. So this GG and Toco Trieno is made in the United States of America, right here in Massachusetts. <laughs> so keep that in mind. It's not made in some place else. It's made right here. So, so the, the word I want for you to know is GG. I think of GG is an endogenous nutrient, which means your body makes it. It's a building block. It's a building block of nutrition. In other words, if you're not sick, it's a building block. Not you also intervene for you for you when you when you're not well. So what does what does it make? It makes CoQ10. So therefore, it gives you energy. It make I know you're gonna ask me more question about this. It make a compound called it make the compound in your body called manoquinone four. And manoquinone is absolutely required for bone health. See, I mean, if I were to care about my bone health, okay, 
I'm done. I got what I need, you know, but, but you have more than that. So I got two. And as we grow older, we may not think about this so much. When the winter time comes, the extremity of our limbs get colder. So that has to do with a body automatic control of body temperature. So that controlling of your body temperature has to do with this building block called GG. I am stunned by what Janao Janao can do in the body. And the last one, pain, pain management. I know I won't have time to talk about all of it. Another time, I know you're having a product now to have GG. If we can cover even the bone and energy, that will suffice. But right now, I gave you four. GG is a building block for energy, for bone strength, for temperature control in our body, and for pain management. What is there not to like? <laughs> yeah, that, so, and that's that's amazing too. So like it, this is a powerful, powerful nutrient that we can be including. But can you maybe outline specifically what are the benefits of tocotrienols uh, for for bone health? And can you provide some details behind the clinical study that you have? Yes, thank you. We we have only done one clinical study on tocotrienol after hundreds of study in animal uh, on tocotrienol and bone health. I will summarize, I'm gonna to read to my audience, but because you're gonna put on YouTube, I'm gonna have this figure like that. Perfect. And this one here is to show you in animal study, we call it preclinical uh, study, conclude that anato tocotrienol from the anato plan, promote bone formation, following excessive resorption. Resorption meaning that it cull back and not able to make good bone. And they did this in ovary tectomized animal model, which means that when they take the ovary out, it is simulating women who are 45 years or older, like postmenopausal women. They work on that to promote bone formation. They work also on orchid tectomized animal, which means that they take the gonads out of the male organ. So that would be for men who are 65 years and older like that. Again, it showed the bone work. And then the third one would be, listen, this is really cool. It, we actually did all of this study and they are, they are not easy study to do. We, said, we use high fat, high carb diet. So that means that these are the people who have metabolic syndrome, uh, like that or metabolic syndrome people model. So this, therefore this applied to men and women and many people have metabolic syndrome, prediabetes and all this. It also worked to mitigate the bone loss. Oftentimes they, they gain weight, it masks their, their loss of bone because of the weight gain. Then the next one, cigarettes, smoking and nicotine. This is cigarette and nicotine is a severe toxicant to building bone. And so we have that animal model when gave toco try, you know, even with a huge toxicant like that, uh, toco try, you know, still did a gallon job to reduce the damage to the bone. We also show that. And then the next one, chronic steroid medicine. Many people have pain in the system. The doctor prescribes steroid drug and we use that in an animal study. So it's drug induced and we saw the toco trying to go after the bad effects of what the drug would do to the bone. We actually did that, Kevin. I'm not pushing anything that just to push the marketing. We actually did this, you know, study. And the last one on animal study is we have, we have a laser beam. We fractured the bone and you know exactly why we did it. We fractured the bone and then, and then uh, under control how the bone heal itself. And then in another group, we gave them toco trieno. And obviously on the one that we gave toco trieno, the fractured bone healed better. So the healing process thing. So we, after a hundred over study on the, I asked the professor, can you please don't do another animal study? I need a clinical study like that. We did. And that clinical, so I just explained to you all the animal studies, so like that. So minimally, please consider taking anato toco trieno. It will be definitely good for your bone and 
many other things that is good for, which I'm sure Kevin is going to ask me later. But this is the only clinical trial that we did on tocotrienol, so your folks can ask me to post it on here. I'll read to you how we did the study. It was a two-year study done in Texas Tech University in Lubbock, Texas, published about two, one or two years ago. So the study is randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled. In short, it just means that all the patients are the same, and their double-blind means that they're blinded, neither the professor who conducts it know, nor the patient know. And uh, placebo-control is, oh, why does the patient need to know or not? Well, because some of the group of the patient taking a dummy pill, and most patients don't want to take dummy pill. You see, so therefore they don't know if they're taking the dummy or the real McCoy, and neither does it. So therefore, it's placebo control as well. So in other words, they call this a gold standard. Not all study you can do this, but we're able to do this. So we did this, and we gave people three a dummy pill another group 300 milligram, and then the other group 600 milligram. And we did this for 12 weeks, that is for three months study like that. So we are not able to do DEXA because DEXA is not able to tell you in three months time, you need to have three years, but we can do a lot of biomarkers. So when we did this, I'll tell you the shorthand version. The 600 milligram tocotrienol did not buy as much as the 300 milligram. In other words, let's say the 300 milligram improved by 100%. The 600 milligram improved it by 120%. So it's not a, a lot more. You expect the 600 milligram to improve 200%. It didn't do that. So 300 milligram is just fine. So we did that one. So we got some understanding. Then we compared the placebo to uh, the 300 milligram. Remember, this is a blinded study. Nobody knows. So there's no chance to have any bias. So when the key is unlocked, the study finished, then everybody knows. Uh, the, the patient knows that if they're taking the real thing or the, the, the not real or the, uh, uh, the placebo, and then the physician knows. Uh, and then the statistics were done. So we have a measurement marker of the bone building marker and the bone resorption marker. Resorption means that it cut off the bone osteoclast. And the bone building is osteoblast. So then they have a ratio of the osteoblast over the osteoclast. So if you have that kind of ratio, the higher the ratio is, the better. So osteopenia means the ratio go down. So we found that on that ratio, the 300 milligram increase 40 to 115 percent. That was special to me. So it increased 40 to 115 percent over three months of the bloodborne market. This is a hard earned data. We actually have to do the study. The next one, we use another marker. It specifically measures bone resorption. Because why do we study that? Because these are postmenopausal women, so the bone resorption will tend to escalate like that. So when we have this marker, we measure them. We notice that the bone resorption marker decreased anywhere from 10 to 20 percent. Now, that's not a big number. Remember, you are fighting against the the uh, estrogen of the woman drop, and therefore the osteoclast will go up. And even if it can drop 10, 20%, what is that value? It may not stop you from having osteoporosis, but it may stop you from having osteoporosis, not at 70 years old, not at 80, but at 90 or 100 years old. I would buy that. So it delayed that seriously. So that's a second marker. So good take home. And the last one. We measure an oxidative stress because we're giving people tocotrienol. And tocotrienol is a very powerful antioxidant. I explained and Kevin captured that on the cell wall. So I knew this would be good, but I didn't want to measure oxidized fat because the fat in the blood, in the blood is emotional like that, you know, up and down, up and down. So I need to have a stable marker and the stable oxidative marker we use is the oxidized DNA that is broke, break down. And we saw that the oxidative stress marker reduced by 30 to 50%. So therefore, to summarize it, the bone building went up 40 to 110%. 
the bone resorption decreased 10 to 20 percent and the oxidative stress marker dropped 30 to 50 percent there it is i just gave you the data of the only study we have and that is amazing and incredibly powerful um i mean the fact that you've already got the study in humans you've got plenty of other uh studies that you've done in animals too but now you've got a study in humans that's the highest standard of of the studies that you can do yes and you're looking at you're not looking at the bone density scores right because it's too short of a period of time but you're looking at the actual bone turnover markers yes. measuring those levels looking at the activity level of those cells that are building up and breaking down bone and seeing improvements, improvements in bone formation and, and a decrease in bone resorption. That's, that's fantastic. That's really yeah, fantastic. That, and, 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 you know, sometimes people ask me why I do this, that study uh, for the audience, it, it may or may not matter to you. You already got the take home message is good, but I'm a scientist. I have to do this. So even though the study is only for three months, it took us two years to do is long and it probably cost me three hundred fifty thousand dollars so if people ask me why yes i do make a living with toco try you know but that's not the main why i i can bring food in the table we're doing the reason i'm doing that is because i am so adverse to selling snake oil because it's so not a scientist so after i decide on the animal study that was the reason why I wanted to do a clinical study. So I did this to show that, will it still hold up if I have a clinical trial? So what you hear is what it is. And the, all the other 20 study is the only one. So I did 19 other clinical trials on TOCO trial, no, not on this, but I, I'm going to leave to Kevin because Kevin is sure to ask me about the GG and the MK4, and I'm going to be delighted and excited to talk about that as well. So I'll leave it, I'll pass it back to you to see what next question you're going to ask me. <laughs> no, and, and you know what, I we I do want to talk about toward the end of this, I want to talk about the other studies that you have. You are a true scientist, right? This is what you do. You investigate, you research, you you figure these things out. And I, I absolutely love what you do because it's it's really a service to the health community and to the end user uh, or end person that's trying to improve their health. So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really, really important. Now let's talk about geranal geraniol. Why does it make sense? Um, actually, before we even get to that, let's talk about what is Gigi's role in the synthesis of MK4? Why is that important to bone health? Okay, I, I will explain it in the reverse order. There's a protein in the body called vitamin K dependent protein, VKDP. So if the audience is dial VKDP, you can find it. So this vitamin K dependent protein have several functions. The original famed function is you take vitamin K1, some chemists call it phyloquinone from dark green leaf, leafy vegetable. If you take them, they will do this VKDP and then it will prevent clot it will make clot in your body when you have tear inside your body if it's outside your body you just put a bandage but when you're inside your body you can't do anything you have to depend on this protein and it comes from vitamin k1 then comes the next vkdp that is part of the manoquinone that's vitamin k2 so the k1 and k2 not to be confused the vitamin k2 has everything to do with bone but so that it's not going to be, you, you kind of like trip yourself. Vitamin K1 had to do with clotting. So I already explained that to you. Two Nobel Prize were given to that. So how do you explain this vitamin K2? So this VKDP make manoquinone 4. And this manoquinone 4 converts a protein and the protein is called osteocalcin. I'm sure Kevin and interview other people on osteocalcin. And this osteocalcin protein will go to the bone. It's specific protein for the bone. When you get to the bone, 
it will organically trap the calcium, keep the calcium in place, and therefore the calcium stay there and you don't lose the bone density. It's, it's different from how tocotrienol works. Tocotrienol works for the osteoblast and osteoclast. This os makes the osteocalcin to go there. So that's what menoquinone for MK4 does. Now, the GG is a piece before. This is a missing link and you, audience out there, you are the first to hear this and you are the two learning biohacker. I've got telling you and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a delivery man. I'm just telling you the, the, the story is biochemistry. Okay, here it is. I'd make it as simple as I can. And if people challenge you, say, I heard this from Dr. Tan. If you have questions, you go ask him and you can tell them to me, then you can segue. Otherwise, if they believe you, wonderful. Come, come talk is, to the researcher who's done this 30 years. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and, and this, I purposely choose a green, green marker pen. This is phyloquinone. This is vitamin K1. So if you eat kale, uh, spinach, broccoli, you get K1 like that. Everybody said that. And vegetarian eat a lot of it like this. So when you eat a lot of uh, uh, green leafy vegetable, a fixed amount of this as is goes inside your body to prevent, uh, to make clot, as I said before. But any extra phyloquinone is not go in, does not go in. You know why? If all of them go in, then all our vegan friends will literally clot to death. Nobody asked that question. But my vegan friends are healthy. They don't clot to death. <laughs> so, so therefore, there must be another, another way to think about it. So when you take an, a, a whole bunch of extra of this, when it gets to the gut, you have an enzyme, it cuts the head off and the tail. By the way, the tail is same length as the GG tail, but it's saturated. It's a saturated tail, that's phyloquinone. The enzyme cuts it off, I purposely make the sound. You just get it cut off, the tail flushed out. This ring our body cannot make will go into inside your body. When it get inside your body, in exactly the same shape as the green one, which is saturated, you have this guy. And I purposely put it red color because this is GG. Your body makes GG, endogenous nutrient. In at least 25 known organs, which is every part of your body. you see this, it come together, it actually will make this. It just snaps in. That, ladies and gentlemen, is MK4. <laughs> I, I, I cannot, I, I know it sounds very simple, very childlike, but hey, the simple, the best thing in, in life are like that. So there you have it. So MK4 is the only manoquinone make in your body. So do not ever confuse. A lot of people talk about MK7 out there. MK7, I, I'll purposely be dramatic. MK7 is made in your gut. And you need to have good gut because good gut means that you don't have Crohn's disease inflammation. Nothing wrong with that. But if you make MK7, 10, 11, 12, the long, long one, like my CoQ10 in the back here, and in the colon, they're just to protect the colon, which is a good thing. But don't ever expect that those MK long, long one is going to get absorbed. The window of opportunity of absorbing nutrient is in the small intestine before the fermentation happened. So therefore, if you take GG, which is a much smaller molecule here. So when you take GG, it's absorbed well. And remember, as we get older, we don't make enough GG. Why do I say that? Have you not read? on the news and other people said that, when we get older, we don't make enough CoQ10. Oh my God, why don't we make enough CoQ10? Because we don't have enough GG. MK4 is the same, except that nobody's talking about MK4 yet. So I just explained to you, GG make MK4, and this MK4 then uh, uh, use, make the protein osteocalcin, and the osteocalcin will make the calcium stay in the bone. That is the role of osteocalcin, and osteocalcin can only be made by MK4. I just gave you as plain English as I possibly can, Kevin. <laughs>
I love this. And it helps prevent the calcification of soft tissues too, right? Yes. I your forgot arteries, this. Your heart, yes. all that, your kidneys, yes. uh, all those kidney, things. Uh, uh, they have studied now in animal or people that have high MK4 have lowest possibility of, of kidney stone and calcification of the artery. And most recently, literally most recently, and, and your audience should go look, you just type MK4 and dementia. Ladies and gentlemen, dementia. And nobody, I want to grow old, but I don't want to grow old. And I can't recognize my wife and children. That will be not good way to go old, you know? So I actually don't know if there's a link between osteoporosis and dementia. If you ever find a link, please send me the paper, then I study more, but I can tell you now. There was a study, centenarians, they pass away and they donate the brain, blessing to these people, they're willing to give their bodies for research, and they found it. The one that have norm, uh, normal ability in memory, when they die, they have the, the brain have highest MK4 the dementia intermediate MK4, and the one have Alzheimer's disease have the lowest MK4. So MK4 have many benefits, but one of the strongest benefit is, it sweeps the calcium from all the parts of your body and put it in the bone where it belongs. That's the main one, but this dementia thing it is a very important thing. They did that because the only vitamin K in the brain is MK4. So they're trying to figure out what else MK4 does in the brain. So those are the few things MK4, but I know your audience is especially interested in the bone. So I gave you the plain, uh, as plain as I can on the GG's role. Well, I know that's also an important topic for our audience, their brain health, too. A lot of them know somebody who has dementia or they saw that with their parents or, or Alzheimer's or something, too. So um, I'm glad that you shared that piece there. I would love to understand. So I know that in preclinical and animal studies, GG has been shown to uh, <laughs> improve bone turnover and stiffness and benefit those on bisphosphonates. So this is with GG, geranogeranial. There are studies. Can you elaborate on this, especially on this bisphosphonates piece too? This is interesting. Yes. Doctor prescribed bisphosphonate uh, to postmenopause, to anybody, but particularly to postmenopausal women who are, are losing bone density. And bisphosphonate is an inorganic compound. It works very powerfully. Just think of toothpaste. It's probably closest to toothpaste. So, and so they take this bisphosphonate it does not work with the VDKP thing like that I mentioned before. It goes straight to the bone and basically inorganically trap the calcium in the bone. And then the calcium cannot, is permanently trapped. It cannot get out. So compared to what I just described to you, the other function of toco you know, this is a very, it's a drug regimen. It is not how the body works to keep calcium. But you know, some people have to do it this way because they lose, lose bone massively. So that's how bisphosphonate work to strengthen the bone. Then in an unusual situation, somewhere in 2005, 2009, some patients that take bisphosphonate went to see their dentist. And then they found out, the dentist found out that, wow, they have narcosis of the jaw, which means death of the jaw bone. So that troubled the dentist a lot because he said that we see people who have bacterial infection, but death of the bone, usually the bug doesn't do that. The bug will kind of like uh, destroy and degrade your gum, but not death. They see obvious death. So then they found out the connection. Many of these patients were taking bisphosphonate. That was when the condition of BRONJ was known. Bisphosphonate related osteonecrosis of the jaw. Basically, the death of the jawbone because of bisphosphonate drug, like that. Now, in a rarer case, not rare occurrence, but rarer case, people have cancer and the cancer have metastasized to the bone. Not exactly people with uh, uh, osteoporosis. When they have metastasized to the bone, you cannot operate, you cannot radiate. 
The only thing you can give to them would be chemo. They gave them bisphosphonate, 20 times higher than people who have osteoporosis. Now, they are forcing the bisphosphonate. So the bisphosphonate will get to the bone like bisphosphonate does, but 20 times higher. They get to the bone, and not only it trapped the calcium there, it irreversibly attached to the cancer cell and killed the cancer. Hey, nothing wrong with that. But in it, that is the most powerful chemo that kill cancer in the bone. So if you were to have metastasis in the bone, you don't have a lot of option. You have to take 20 times higher. So these people will be 20 to 30 times higher to have problem with narcosis of the jaw. The doc, the dentist and scientist now found out, and did, I kid you not, the reason they have narcosis of the jaw was the jaw bone is a living organism, organ. And the bisphosphonate so destroyed the ability to produce GG, and GG is required in the jaw bone for making the jaw bone. <laughs> so, so they inhibit the jawbone for making GG. So there's no available of GG to make the jawbone. That's why they have death of the jawbone. So, so therefore, if you have any jawbone low density, well, then it's obvious. By the way, I'm proud of this. I've studied this like mad. We're going another one. I didn't even tell Kevin. So your audience need to know this. We have now decided to do a clinical trial in Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia with the dental surgery department there. And for men and women who have tooth extraction, people have bad tooth, their tooth extraction. So when you extract the tooth, then you have a socket. They call it loosening a, a, a hole like that. So he's going to put in this calcium phosphate and then we'll load the GG in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the same GG that's going to be in your heart. Load it in and put it in the socket and suture it up. And we're going to find out if the toco try in, uh, no, sorry, not toco try, if the GG will accelerate the growth uh, of the gum cell, which is part of your jawbone. So we are putting, what I say the research direction is, it's going to take some time to get the answer, but we are doing this. So I wouldn't do this if there's no rationale to do this. So that's the bisphosphonate piece. So if people are taking bisphosphonate, minimally, and I'm not asking you, you should be talking to your doctor if you should take or not take, but if you're taking it, at least to take things that can help to prevent the side effects of bisphosphonate. I love this. We, we're talking about like geranogeranial. It's a nutrient. It's an endogenous nutrient. We yeah. produce this. We produce less of this as we age. Most people have probably never heard of it, uh, but it's apparently very, very important for our overall health, our general well-being, our oral health as mm -hmm. well. And I love that we've got some studies behind this to show that there's uh, it can be helping support us in all these different areas. Uh, now, I know you have 20 clinical studies on tocotrienols. Can you explain some of the other benefits? And actually, um, yeah, yeah, just beyond bone health, can you explain some of the other benefits beyond that? Besides bone health, because I knew tocotrienol is a very potent antioxidant, it prevents the lipid on the cell membrane from oxidation, and the loss of it probably underwrite the possibility of inflammation, early death of cell, aging process, I surmise that in the fundamental understanding. So we decided that a best way to test that in a clinical study would be to study chronic condition. And among the chronic condition we decided to study were dyslipidemia. People have high triglyceride, high cholesterol, or people who have prediabetes. Uh, the sugar is normal high, but not high enough to be diabetic. And we study people with uh, diabetes. And then we study people with cancer, all are chronic condition. And 
the one that we took the longest time to study would be people with fatty liver disease. It's a crossover from a, a crossover from people with metabolic syndrome. So dyslipidemia, pre-diabetes, type two diabetes, fatty liver disease, and cancer. So we did all of this study. It's probably approaching twenty study more now, like that. So of these, I know. I can give you the shorthand answer rather than doing it blow by blow. Most people will be proud. I did this study and then they go blow by blow. There's so many studies. The, the overriding picture is we look at the oxidative damage and the oxidative damage is contained because it's a potent antioxidant. Then people say, what about inflammation? See, the flip side of oxidative damage is inflammation. So we study inflammation as in C-reactive protein, as in uh, NF kappa B, interleukin 6, all this inflammatory thing. Most of the time, the C reactive protein interleukin 6, they drop anywhere from about 25 to 45%. Usually, the less well the person is, the more dramatic that the drop is. And then for type 2 diabetes and pre-diabetes, we saw the sugar drop about 10% and the diabetic, the sugar also dropped 10-15%. Now, behind the fact that people have high sugar or before they have high sugar, they have high triglyceride. If you don't believe me, look at the nutrition, look at the blood panel your doctor gave to you. Besides looking at the sugar, look at the triglyceride. The triglyceride is usually high. So hypertriglyceridemia always precedes hyperglycemia. So if you look, we notice that the triglyceride drop typically anywhere from 30, sometimes 40%. That's an excellent sign because if you control the triglyceride in your body, usually your sugar will come back to kilter. And then in the fatty liver uh, study, we had ultrasound scan. We also study triglyceride sugar in the whole ball of wax. So we study ultrasound to see the fat in the liver and the fat in the liver egress uh, 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 come out. The, the phrase is called cetosis. So it's reduction of cetosis. And if the cetosis is more serious, the fat store in the liver, they're fibrosis. That means that the cell uh, have scarring tissue. So we also read the scarring tissue and notice that the scarring tissue is reduced. So therefore, in all of this study, we publish all of them. So if you ever email me, I can send you all this study. You can find it Google. We, we usually pay a $2,000 more. So when you press a button, you can get the whole study yourself. So, so, so how about this? You, you take a cynical approach. You, you partly believe in me. So you go online, you type NAFLD, non-alcohol fatty liver disease, and toco trienol, and see what you get. Let's say you type Jaranol, Jaranol, and B-R-O-N-J. You are going to find out for yourself like this. And remember, American River, my tiny company, is the only company in the world making GG. And we are doing clinical study. There are lots and lots of animal study. And I'm so proud that uh, uh, bone coach is recommending the importance of these two compounds uh, for the bone, both the toco trienol piece that does different job than the GG piece. Just all, remember simplistically, toco trienol is an exogenous nutrient. Your body does not make it exo from outside your body, but it mitigates chronic condition. As we age or we have osteopenia, our bone, our body is under stress because your estrogen, oh, I forgot this piece. Estrogen is an antioxidant. If you look at the thing, you look at the structure of estrogen is antioxidant, but your estrogen go this way. That means that your, your antioxidant also went this way. Then your oxidation in your body go this way. So then the toco trienol is good if for nothing else to maintain your oxidative stress in control. That is what toco trienol can do and many other things I mentioned. GG is not an antioxidant. It's an endogenous nutrient in your body. I call this a nutrition, a biochemistry is a building block of your body. It makes CoQ10, it makes MK4, it controls your body temperature and it manages your pain. Another time I can explain this, don't have time to do it. By the way, 
if you happen to have a little bit cold limbs in the winter time or the cold season come, and if you start taking this, and somehow in your extremity, you can actually uh, are able to manage warm a little bit more, remember what I told you. GG controls your body temperature. You cannot make your body control your body temperature. It is an automatic control. And that is, if you ask me, I can send you a study. It's very exciting. It, it, GG, you know how it does that? GG make brown adipose tissue. White adipose tissue that we have is just simply a fat storage thing. Brown adipose tissue is a fat burning energy producing and it generates heat. So if you have cold limbs, you need an hot heat to go to the extremity of your skin. But if you don't have, you will have cold. Where does the heat come from? It comes from energy produced heat from the brown adipose tissue, B-A-T. You Google, and when you're done talking with me, brown adipose tissue and GG, you will know I live life I never tell lies. <laughs> you just Google that and then you're going to find it. Oh my God. Gigi induced ability to make brown adipose tissue. What, why? How can that be bad? You know? So anyway, I, I, I got off track, but that's a temperature control piece, Kevin. <laughs> hey, it's Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Bone Coach Show. If you're finding it helpful, please leave a positive rating and review. Hit that like button, subscribe to the podcast or the channel. That lets us help more people and reach and serve more people. And it also lets us know that this is helpful to you on your journey to better health and stronger bones. And then also right down in the show notes, you can actually find a link to my free bone healthy recipes guide. That's going to give you access to some amazing and delicious recipes to support your journey to stronger bones. And then also we have a link to my free stronger bones masterclass in the show notes too. And that is the three step process that has helped people in over 1500 cities around the world get confident in their plan for stronger bones. Over 110,000 people have, have taken part in this and it's been really, really helpful for them and I want you to have free access to it too. So add your name and email right down there in the show notes, get access to that free Stronger Bones Masterclass and let's get you confident in your Stronger Bones plan today. I mean, Dr. Barry Tan, I, I gotta tell you, I love your energy and your passion. I, I could still imagine like when you first discovered this plant, <laughs> just the level of excitement. If you have that level of excitement still now, when you, after years, decades and decades of researching, you know, geranyl, geranyl and tocotrienols, I, I love it. I love what you're doing. And just for everybody listening, I want to summarize some of the most important studies here that, uh, and, and the results from those studies and the amounts too. So uh, specifically for tocotrienols, in an open label dose escalation study, mm -hmm. 250 milligrams a day of anata tocotrienols improved lipid parameters, inflammatory biomarkers, and oxidative stress in hypercholesterolemia subjects. Mm -hmm. Another one, in a randomized double blind placebo controlled study, 300 milligrams of anata tocotrienols decreased bone resorption, so bone breakdown and improved bone turnover rate in postmenopausal women. That is big. That is extremely relevant to what we're talking about right now. 300 milligrams of anatotocotrienols decreased bone resorption and improved bone turnover in postmenopausal women. Uh, the other one, another one is in a, in a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study, 250 milligrams a day of anatotocotrienols led to improved glycemic control accompanied by reduced inflammation and oxidative stress and was further confirmed by modified miRNA expression. And then another big one would be in a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study, 300 milligrams of anatotocotrienols improved glycemic control in patients with prediabetes. So this is a powerful, powerful antioxidant that can support the antioxidant activity. It's going to promote cardiovascular, circulatory health, it's going to provide support for healthy total cholesterol levels, as well as LDL cholesterol levels within the normal range. It's promoting regulation of healthy metabolic functioning. It's helping maintain your bone health. And that is just for the tocotrienol component. Now, if we talk about that, that alone is pretty 
uh, pretty impressive. But if we bring in the other piece that Dr. Barry Tan has, has been researching for uh, over 30 years, we can see that geraniol at the 150 milligram a day level can help support bone and oral health, CoQ10 and MK4 replenishment, muscle tone and balance. But if we get to the 300 milligram a day, that's where we can get to the point where we're helping support. And I know we're going to talk about some other studies that you have in the works too, Dr. Barry Tan, in just a sec. Uh, but it can help support healthy hormone levels like testosterone, potentially. Yeah. Uh, statin and bisphosphonate medication use. Uh, as far as I know from, you know, taking statins can can deplete or... Uh, oh, by the way, we, we are doing... Levels. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, no. You're going to ask me that question. What what study am I currently doing? Then I'll mention that. Yes, 100%, because a lot of people take statins. Yeah, I want to circle I want to circle to this because statins and bisphosphonate medications, that's where the geranol geraniol can be really helpful at the 300 milligram level. And then myopathy and sarcopenia. So these are all major, major concerns. And like I know Dr. Barry just spent quite a bit of time explaining and walking through what each of these nutrients are and why they're so important. This is just me kind of summarizing that and bringing it all together. But Dr. Barry, could you maybe explain the last couple studies just for the sake of time? Maybe if yeah. we explain the last couple studies or something important about statins and, and anything else you think is important. Okay. Uh, I'll combine them. And also what are the current study I'm doing? So I already told you one on the two thing that the Bronx thing on the GG thing. And the other two study is actually mostly GG now. Uh, the G we are doing a study in Texas where people are taking statin drugs. One of the, one group takes 150 milligram, the other group takes 300 milligram GG. These are people who are on statin, have myopathy under a cardiologist care, and is running on a medical treadmill. So they can see how long they can run. And they're not exercise sign, they're just running a treadmill. And then the body is beginning to ache, and then they have to stop. And then they take took, uh, the GG to see if the GG will mitigate the muscle problem called myopathy on them. So that's that study. And the, the, I mentioned about the Bronx study already. The other study was we gave people GG to increase testosterone. We should be, we completed the study. There is an implication to increase people's testosterone. Uh, but so when you take the, the product, uh, you may find increased energy. It could be the increased energy comes from uh, the increased testosterone, so you have increased thrive. Or it could be the GG converts it to CoQ10 and CoQ10 give you energy. I don't know how to say one or the other like that, but they're both good. And then um, the other study that we have is probably going to be the last of our TOCO trieno study. By me telling you why we did the study, you automatically know, wow, Dr. Tan did this. He must be going after this. I'll tell you the study. We decided that because it's not a good report card of Americans, of us, that we are carrying a lot of weight. So we decided to use toco trieno and study people who have obesity. So not just overweight. So men and women with obesity and with obesity, their inflammation will be out of kilter. But then I thought, I'm talking to the bone health group. Do you know that most people who are overweight and obese, they have bone loss. It's just that they, their body is so uh, uh, burdensome to them. They're not thinking of bone. People call this uh, uh, os osteosarcopenia. They're, they're, they are large and then their loss of muscle mass and loss of bone mass, but the body weight is masking that. So we are doing that study now. We're giving people toco try, you know. I've forgotten the dose, but it's probably going to be, uh, uh, again, 300 and 600 milligram. So those are our three outstanding study, toco try, you know, and obesity, Toco trieno and myopathy on those people taking satin and toco, uh, no, 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 GG and those people take satin and GG for those people uh, who have Bronx who take bisphosphonate. So a bisphosphonate study, a satin study and toco trieno obesity study. So I am personally proud that, uh, that uh, Kevin is going to recommend to your audience 
the combination of tocotrienol and GG, this is this is really a fantastic darling. And then and then all that to say, to sum it up, this is from this plant. <laughs> this plant just make this like this, and there are millions of plants out there. You know, I just happen. I'm no medicine man. <laughs> if I were to be a medicine man, the first bite from a mosquito, I'm dying of malaria. You know, I, I, I don't like to be in a job. I just happen to be in that part of Amazonia, ask the right question, take this home. And now 25 years later, I have this to tell the audience. So if you are blessed, I am blessed. If it works for you, let Kevin know and eventually it trickle down, trickle down to me. And if I found that that work in people, that give me a lot of energy. I'll continue to do other clinical trials and bear more other results to other people. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Blessing to you all. Let me know how this thing worked for you. I would expect that for the benefit you might see, uh, uh, don't expect it after one or two months. Now. If it is, then your body responded positively. Expect that you uh, expect at least three months, but it is of no deficit. Most of you already know your, your nutritional panel, your lipid profile like that. So if you go to see the doctor three months after, you will be the best judge from see before and after. So thank you so much for having me on. So great to be here. Dr. Barry, I love your passion. I love everything that you do. And I mean, clearly this, these nutrients are supportive of our health. They're supportive of our bones that we've got the studies that show this. And I absolutely love it. And all the, the specific nutrients that we talked about too, um, I want to make sure I tell people where they can find those in just a second. But before we do that, Dr. Barry, I know you have a vitamin E book, like a tocotrienol book. Oh. Could, we, could we maybe put this in the show notes? I actually want to share it with people so they can look and see the benefits of tocotrienols as well. Would that be okay with you? Yes, you pl please do. And you can download this book. It's free of charge. If you see me in person, I'll autograph and give it. This is another labor of love. I, 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 I order many of it just to have people in people's hand. Maybe in the next year or two, I'll do a follow-up book on the GG. But right now, I have the Toko Tri in a book. Yes, please do. Wonderful. And then, so we're going to link to that book. And then also, so we talked about the specific nutrients, the specific amounts. We actually specifically talked about 300 milligrams of tocotrienols being beneficial for bone health and heart health and a variety of other things. Talked about 300 milligrams of geranol geraniol. You can actually find the exact amounts and dosages of these nutrients and ingredients. You can find them at Healthy Bones Co., Dot com And if you look for a product called Anatrol, we'll actually link to this in the show notes. That is the, that contains the exact ingredients that we talked about today. So I want to thank everybody again for listening. Make sure you check that out. If anything resonated with you here, make sure you check that out. We'll also leave Dr. Barry Tan's book on vitamin E in the show notes. So you can check that out as well. And you can find all the resources, show notes, everything mentioned here today over at bonecoach.com forward slash vitamin E, bone health, and Dr. Barry Tan. I want to thank you again so much for your time. We'll see you in the next episode. Hey, it's Bone Coach Kevin Ellis. Hope you found that episode helpful and that you enjoyed it. Just one last reminder, if you haven't done so already, head over to bonecoach.com, sign up for your free seven-day osteoporosis kickstart. It's going to tell you everything you need to do to start getting on the path to improvement. Hope you found this helpful. I'm your bone coach, Kevin Ellis. I'll see you soon.